Hello, Knox County third graders. My name is Mrs. Sawyers. I am so happy that you will be reading and writing with me today. You can find the handouts for today's lesson under the student resource tab on the Knox County Schools website, www.knoxschools.org. Let's get started. If this video is hard to understand, consider trying the following options. One, turn on closed captions if available. Two, adjust the playback speed to slow down the video. Three, consider watching short clips, then pause, listen, and watch again. Four, ask someone in your home to watch the video with you. Stop frequently and talk to your partner about what you heard and understood. Let's start today with a daily warm up. You can grab a pencil and paper and work along with us. What is a phrase and what is a clause? How are they the same and how are they different? Well, a phrase is a group of related words and a clause is a group of words with a subject and its predicate or verb. So they are both groups of words, but I know it's a clause when it has a subject and a verb. Let's decide if these groups of words are phrases or clauses. The teacher takes attendance. Do you see a subject? Do you see a verb? I see a subject teacher and verb takes. So this must be a clause. Many students. Do you see a subject? Do you see a verb? I see a noun students, but I don't see a verb. So this must be a phrase. Students learn. Do you see a subject? Do you see a verb? I have a subject students and a verb learn. So this is a clause. More homework. Do you see a subject or a verb? I see homework and I know it's a noun, but there's not a verb. So this is a phrase. During the week. This is a phrase. I don't have a subject and it's verb. Now this next one might be a little tricky. They have homework. My subject is a pronoun this time. Do you know what it is? Yes, they. And a verb, that's a linking verb. Yes, have. So this is a clause. Great job, guys. Now let's take our phrases and clauses and make them complete sentences. Take a minute to look over our phrases and clauses from the last slide. What do we need to do to make them complete sentences? Yes, we need a subject and verb in each one. We also need capital letters at the beginning and punctuation at the end. Now, will everyone's sentences look the same? No, and that's okay. Let's take a moment and look at the sentences I came up with today. The teacher takes attendance. Many students have homework. Students learn at school. They have more homework. During the week, they have school. They have homework. What do you think? Do they all begin with a capital letter? Do you see punctuation at the end? Now the important part too is the subject and the verb. Check and make sure they each have a subject and verb. Yes, they do. Now it's time to check your sentences. What do you think? Third graders, why is it so important that we can write in complete sentences? If you said so we can have clear thoughts and express our ideas and that we can complete our quick writes, you're correct. Let's take a moment to look at our agenda together. Today we will read about school in Japan versus school in America so we can discuss the differences and the similarities. 
we will know we have it when we can write about school in Japan and school in America. And let's also look at our quick write for the day. Do you think an American student would have more difficulty adapting to a Japanese school? Or a Japanese student would have more difficulty adapting to an American school? So as we read today, we'll need to think about our quick write and take notes. Before we start reading, let's look at some of our sleuth tips. In this unit, you'll be looking for clues about cultures. Here are some sleuth tips to help you. Way to go. First, gather evidence. How do sleuths find clues by authors? Sleuths look for sequence clues. How one event caused another, or how one event had many effects. Sleuths think hard while they read and put different clues together. Ask questions. Where do sleuths get answers to their questions? Sleuths find answers to their questions in pictures, in the text, and by talking to other sleuths. Sleuths use books or computers to find answers. A good sleuth never gives up. Make your case. How do sleuths use clues when they make a case? Sleuths explain how the clues led them to their conclusions. Sleuths know that it's important to explain how pictures and text reveal answers. Prove it. Why do sleuths think about who will read what they write? Sleuths know that readers are different and that one type of writing will not always work. Sleuths always try to be interesting and clear. Now that we have our sleuth tips, let's get started. We always start our lessons with our essential questions to pull our learning together. Let's think. What happens when two ways of life come together? And how are cultures alike and different? Well, I know that last week you talked about clothing around the world with Mrs. Buchanan. Clothing is an important part of cultures. We can see influences from many cultures in our clothing today. We will also be reading about how food is different around the world next week. Is food an important part of culture? Yes, it is. And today we will be reading and looking for ways our culture is similar and different than the Japanese culture. So let's follow our sleuth tips and look for answers in the text. Are you ready? Let's go. Take a minute to get your text out if you have it. Also grab a pencil and paper. Let's read our quick write together and set the purpose of our reading today. Do you think an American student would have more difficulty adapting to a Japanese school or a Japanese student would have more difficulty adapting to an American school? Before I decide my opinion, I need to gather information about school in Japan compared to school in America. So my purpose for reading today is to find out the similarities and differences between school in Japan and school in America. Then I'll form my opinion. Okay, readers, let's get started. Remember, as we read, we will be looking for similarities and differences between an American school and a Japanese school. We'll need to be able to write to our prompt. So follow along, listen, and take notes as I read. Let's start. Have you ever wondered how a school day in Japan might compare to one of yours? Like many students in the United States, many Japanese elementary school students start their day around 8.30 a.m. and end around 3 p.m. They have math and reading classes. They listen to the announcements at the start of the day. The teacher takes attendance. During the week, students might gather for an assembly where the principal or someone else talks to them. Did you see any important details that you want to include in our notes? I noticed that school starts at 8.30 and ends around 3 p.m. for both students in Japan and students in the United States. I think that would be an easy adjustment in a new school. This is a similarity between Japanese schools and American schools. 
Let's add it to our notes. Let's read the next paragraph together. There are a number of differences too. Did you hear that key word, differences? This is a big clue. We need to pay close attention now. For example, in the United States, students learn handwriting. In Japan, students learn shodo or calligraphy. This involves dipping a brush into ink and writing symbols. The symbols stand for words. Students in Japan also have a class where they learn to cook and sew. Did you see any important details? I thought it was interesting when it talked about handwriting in the United States and shodo or calligraphy in Japan. Let's add that to our notes. Do you think it would be more difficult to learn shodo than handwriting? I found this picture. What do you think? Looks a little more complicated to me. I also saw that they learn how to cook and sew in elementary school. I think that's an important detail to add to our notes too. Would you like to learn how to cook and sew in elementary school? I think I would. Let's continue to the next page. Let's look at the next two paragraphs. Remember, we are looking for differences between American schools and Japanese schools. We need to be able to write about which one would be the most difficult to adapt to. Follow along as I read the first paragraph on this page. If you think school is hard in America, think about what students in Japan must do. They often have more homework than students in the United States do. They also spend at least six more weeks in school each year. Some schools also assign chores to students, sweeping and cleaning the floor, wiping the boards, and emptying the trash are some of these chores. Did you see or hear any differences? What should we add to our notes? I think it's important to talk about homework. That seems to be a big difference. In Japan, they have more homework than we have in the United States. I also wanna put down homework under school in America, but I wanna make sure that I put down that there's more homework in school in Japan. Yes, they also go to school six weeks longer. Would you want to go to school six weeks longer? Let's look at that sentence. They spend at least six more weeks in school each year. Now, they is a pronoun. Who does they stand for? Yes, students in Japan. It is important for you to know who the pronoun stands for in, e in each sentence. This is a way for you to check your comprehension of the sentence and passage. When you are reading, always stop and make sure you know who or what the pronoun stands for in the passage. I also have another important detail, and I think that's chore. Yes, would you like to do chores at school? Can you imagine? Some students would like to do school chores while others would not. What about you? Let's read our last paragraph together. If you were an American student in a Japanese school, do you think it would be difficult to adjust to these differences? Remember, you would have to do everything in a completely different language. Wow, third graders, do you think you have enough information to form an opinion? I think we do. Let's look at our quick write question again. Do you think an American student would have more difficulty adapting to a Japanese school or a Japanese student would have more difficulty adapting to an American school? Hmm, what type of writing are they asking for? Yes, opinion. So now I have to decide my opinion. After reading the passage and looking back at my notes, I think it would be more difficult for an American to adapt to a Japanese school. Do we have the same opinion? Either answer is correct, as long as you can support your thoughts. Now let's look at our notes and find evidence. School in Japan, 8.30 to 3.30. Shodo, calligraphy, 
cook and sew, more homework, six weeks longer, chores. School in America, 8.30 to 3, handwriting and homework. I think I want to use more homework, six weeks longer, and chores. These things are very different than school in America. I also think it's important to mention that we do have homework in America, just not as much. What organizer can I use to help me write my opinion paper? Did you say Oreo? Yes, Oreo. Let's look at it together. O stands for opinion. I must state the opinion I'm going to support in the paragraph. I am going to say that it would be more difficult for an American student to adapt to a Japanese school. Look at my opinion sentence. An American student would struggle adapting to a Japanese school. Does this sentence clearly state my opinion? Yes. Next we have R for reason. Remember, I found my reasons in the passage and wrote them in the notes. Let's look back at the notes. I circled more homework, six weeks longer, chores, and then also under school in America, I circled homework. How can I put this together in a statement? This is what I came up with. This is because Japanese students go to school for six weeks longer than American students. Chores are also a part of their day. Next is E, for example, I need to connect my information about an American school and a Japanese school. I need to give an example of school in America. So this is what I have. Students in America are used to having longer breaks, less homework, and no chores at school. Now we're ready for our final O. I now need to restate my opinion in different words. But remember, my opinion must stay the same as the, uh, that, as the opinion I began with. Japanese schools would be a true adjustment for any American student. What do you think? Did I restate my opinion? Yes. Okay, guys, now it's your turn. This is your writing task. Do you think an American student would have more difficulty adapting to a Japanese school or a Japanese student would have more difficulty adapting to an American school? Now is your turn to write. Remember that this is your opinion. There is no wrong answer as long as you can support your opinion. I've included the Oreo organizer to help you organize your thoughts. Happy writing. Let's now take a moment to look back over our agenda and make sure we accomplished everything we set out to. Today we will read about school in Japan versus school in America. Yes. So we can discuss the differences and the similarities. Yes. We will know we have it when we can write about school in Japan and school in America. Did you do it? Yes, we did. We did it together. Thank you for reading and writing with me today. I had fun and I hope you did too. I look forward to the next time we read and write together. Thank you. Goodbye.